Hi there guys, it's me Brian Cockrell, we've just given you a little tip uh, what's going to happen on Friday night, we're going to have Kev Kilty back, uh, the, the best, one of my best friends, if, if not the best friend of the garage, we've known him for 30 odd years, um, everyone who su subscribed last week, everyone who watched it, loved it, we even had the police raiding us, uh, <laughs> and they'll let us carry on with it, so just, uh, what we're going to talk about from Friday. Well, I was going to finish off, because when we got interrupted with the police uh, that time, we were just at the height of uh, when I was in the middle of the prison sentence, so I'm going to finish off telling some in detail stories about things, so I was only a, a young soft kid then, and some good, good stories, and then when I came out of prison, when I got a job as a lifeguard, what I suffered in between it a little bit with anxiety and a few things uh, and then going on from the lifeguard work to when I spent a little bit of time with my friend Denny Oil in the TA Special Air Service uh, and Denny later spent a bit of time with another good friend of mine Paul Owens who was in the uh, TASS, I'm going to mention that. Yeah. Uh, in future episodes I think I've got some good stuff to come. Is that from Paul, from Paul from Thorns, big, big yeah, Paul? Paul from Stockton, Paul Owens. Yeah, yeah, big lad, he's awesome that. Yeah, yeah really, yeah. really. Oh, what a lovely lad. Good friend. He used to come and bail in all the time. And yeah, really, really. Could really. have a fight for fun, but he was yeah. a gentleman, loved it, always dressed for this good lad. Yeah, lovely yeah, lad. Yeah, well, I invite him to his wife and he's yeah, never yeah, forgive me yeah, for it because yeah. she stung him yeah. about £200,000. <laughs> you know, so, uh, yeah. uh, anyway, so we're going to talk about that and then yeah. some of the door work and and then getting into a little bit of a, a crime of so that this episode will be quite a bit that comes into it about the crime scene some of it that's not been aired some that I can legally say and people yeah. will click on what it's about yeah and then the episode after that we're going to go heavily into it some stories back even tomorrow to the old cannon street days where yeah. before my time when it was the cannon street riots and yeah. there was a lot of old people involved in that you know you've got the likes of uh Mickey Parsons, who was a tough bloke, uh, around the same time you got uh, John Graham's dad, uh, who was a and Tony Robbo's dad, Dicky Robbo, Brian Graham's dad. He was a really tough lad. There was a couple of stories of that. Even though I didn't know Dicky very, very well, I know Brian and John and Tony. But the dad was a, a bit of a legend. Someone else maybe should come on and talk about Dicky because yeah. some good stories there. Uh, and basically just chatting on about a bit of the crime stuff, a bit of the prison thing, a bit of Winnie Banks, a bit of, a bit of some of the local or oh, very hard people from the borough, you know what I mean? A person we knew very, very well who uh, I always held in high regard was John Black, you know. Yeah, uh, brilliant, fantastic. I worked with him and John Howard doing a bit of security work for a, a while, mine, and it, it was uh, John Black, myself, uh, John Howard and uh, Buster, you know, we had some great laughs and that, you yeah. know, so talk about that. Yeah, well. John was good. John, John, John Black was the one who taught me to box, even with Frank Yaffet and a few other boxers taught me, took me with, with John Graham, uh, sorry, John Howard, uh, we the well, John Dryden, yeah. went to see him a few times with John, and we used to, me and John used to go with Steve, who was his stepson, Steve Corbell, we used to box in the uh, the park, out the park, and he'd yeah. the pads, and John would show you shots, what? I always like want to throw my best shot in Brian. You can't all throw your best shots. You've got to learn to throw shots from different angles. Yeah. And he taught me all that stuff and learned a lot from John. Yeah. He was like I like a father figure to me when I was on the door type of thing because yeah. I looked up the job and, and never had uh, ever had an argument with yeah. Paul and off and lovely little bit. But he also yeah. taught he also took Lee Duffy in. Yeah, and Lee yeah. Duffy had nowhere to live and he yeah. looked after Lee. He was a really really well he still is. A really, really nice man. Very, very knowledgeable as well, you know. Dog, dog trainer. His medicines, yeah. his Excellent dog trainer. Yeah. I'm also going to briefly mention <coughs> in this one a little bit about uh, my sister Maureen and about her husband John McParland. I mean, in the early days before Mac got really high profile, he was known as a, a tough lad. Boxing and that wasn't about them, but he was a strong lad. And mm. there is some of the lads in the army used to call him once Mac, Mac you know, he, yeah, yeah. he could knock people out with a punch. But there's some good stories on him, some sad stories. Yeah. I'm going to focus a little bit on that, but then also uh, the next episode yeah. really in on a, on a few names, you know. Because, yeah. uh, you know, people say to me, Barry, you've had a strange life, but I, I never think I'm a gangster, and I'm not no, a gangster. 
you know, I like to, 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 I wish everyone had peace. I wish there was peace something and I'm a gangster. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, you, you don't proclaim yeah, the thing. I don't proclaim the thing, it's just... Uh, the Most of the time you try to help uh, it, it's just other people, people, you know... Uh, I've done more good things than I've bad things many yeah, times because, yeah. you know, what Kevin had yeah. people out of trouble. And, and when people phoned the police on council estates, I mean, I was doing a documentary on the BBC and I went, well, why...